Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrita Naram Cheva Narutama Devim Sarasate Vyatsad Tattu Jaya Mutirayet Nastra Prayesa Bhadrisu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhava Itinais Tiki So Srimad Bhagavatam can to ten chap chapter seventy-five text thirty-six. Is it? Okay. The title of this chapter is Duryodhan Humiliated. Text thirty-six. Tata Duryodhana Mani Parito Bratribiripa Kiritamali Yanvisan Asi Asta Chipan Rusha Tatadriyo dhanamani Parito bratribiripa Kirita mali nyawisan Asi asta shipan rusha Can someone try? Ladies. So what for what what for what translation? I'm sorry, we we, are, we got running short of time. We were giving chance to everyone. Everything has to be based on time. <laughs> so uh, what for what translation? Uh, Tatra, there. Duryodhana, Duryodhana, Mani, proud, Paritaha, surrounded, Bratribi. By his brothers. brothers. Ripa, O King. king. Kirita, wearing a crown. crown. Mali, Mali, and a necklace. Nyawisat, entered. Asi, 
a sword has taha in his hand chipan insulting the doorkeepers rusha angrily so uh, translation and purport we have a very brief purport but it's very insightful a translation a proud Duryodhan holding his sword in his hand and wearing a crown and a necklace angrily went into the palace in the company of his brothers O king insulting the doorkeepers as he entered please respond to repeat proud Duryodhan holding his sword in his hand and wearing a crown and a ne and necklace angrily went into the palace in the company of his brothers, O oh, king, insulting the doorkeepers as he entered. So, Papad, uh, my Prabhupada is Shila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami, Prabhupada Kij. Shila Prabhupada writes that, uh, this is, by, I'm sorry, by the followers of Shila Prabhupada. <laughs> I'm sorry. We should give credit to whom is due. Okay, give to Caesar the world belongs to Caesar. <clears throat> Shila Papa writes that the Rodan was always in an envious and angry mood. And therefore, on a slight provocation, he spoke sharply with the doorkeepers and became angry. Hmm. Yen at his mind, see Guru Ved Maha, see Chaitanya, man of this time, stab fetam, yer a bootily, swayam rupam, kadamaya, the dart is swap, the dantic. Vandi see Krishna Chaitanya, Nichananda Sahodito, good and high, postpo one to cheat to chant to me. Jaya see Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichinand, see Advaita, Gadar, Sivasa, the Gora Batu. Are Krishna, Are Krishna. Namaste, Sara, Sata Deve, Gauravani, Pacharine, Nirvisesa, Sanyavadi, Pasatya, Yisutra. Pancha Kalpatari, Vyacha, Kripa, Sunbya, Evacha, Padatana, Pavani, Vajna, Vyona. So, uh, <coughs> I'm sure those of you who have been coming to the Bhagavatam uh, classes, you've been hearing this whole episode of Duryodhan uh, being very upset, angry, envious, what have you. He has, very, he has very wonderful bad qualities. The good thing is, if we may, we, we may have wonderful good qualities, but one bad quality can just destroy the whole system. Just one. It's just like these five fingers, if one of these fingers is stained by fuel, very quickly, the whole of these other fingers will be uh, contaminated. If one of these fingers is affected by lap leprosy, very quickly, this, the whole of the whole, if not the whole body. So, Values are basically they are honored, they are even worshipped. Because values make human beings who they are. Vices destroy society. And envy is one of those deadly vices. One of those deadly sins. Another thing here is anger. Anger is also very destructive. Of course, modern psychologists, they say there are two types of anger or whatever. Bending anger and destructive anger. 
But the anger that is being talked about here is destructive anger. And how is anger born? Bhagavad Gita 262 mentions, Lord Krishna mentions in the last two lines there, how anger is developed. It's, it's a whole process. Hunger is developed through, uh, it mentions, from, it begins with contemplation on the objects of the sensory modalities, on the objects of the senses. I may see a beautiful woman, or oh, a handsome looking man, attractive man, and I want that person to be mine. And it doesn't work out. I become angry. Remember the case of Susupal now? <laughs> Susupal became angry with Krishna because, you know, Krishna, you know, took over. He wanted a wife, and Krishna <laughs> took over. They became lifetime enemies. And what was it? At the end of it all was death. Anger, it can lead to death. And what is the cause of the anger? Bhagavad Gita explains, Sangat, uh, sangat karma abhijayati. Uh, sangat krodha abhijayati. Sangat. Ka, karma krodha abhijayati. Karma. From lust. In other words, unfulfilled objectivities. Unfulfilled expectations. Unfulfilled desires. And we have desires streaming into our consciousness like rivulets flowing into the ocean. And there's no question of desirelessness. <laughs> no, no one can say, well, I don't desire anything. Desire is a constant. The variable is the object of desire. The variable is the object of desire. We always desire. Even the pure devotee proper desire to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. I was in uh, Kenya and the devotee who took me out, uh, Govinda, I uh, went to the uh, Indian embassy to file for my visa. And so he saw one tall hotel building round. And he said that when proper saw this building, no proper went to Kenya. He said when proper saw this building, he said the, his Jew temple should look like this. So they, they took photographs and that's how the Jew temple was designed. He has a desire. My temple for Krishna, isn't this hotel? Temple for Krishna should be beautiful like this. So desire, we must have desire. And the desire should be dovetailed in service to Krishna. If the desire is based on how to give pleasure to my senses, uh, we will create so many enemies. So, having known how anger comes about, we should not honor hunger. We should not worship hunger. We should not make anger our deity. Some psychologists say if you're angry, you just have to act it out. And, it, that's, and, and then it's addressed. No, it's not. Anger is also like lust. If even you act it out, another one will come. Another one will come. Another one will come. It's like pouring fuel into fire, thinking, oh, it is water to extinguish it. No. Therefore, anger has to be checkmated, and there are interventions for that. And one of those interventions is given by Krishna himself in the Mahabharata, when Krishna was <clears throat> on a trip with uh, Satyaki and Balaram. They got a point and night was going to overtake them to decide to sleep. And someone has to guide. One of them has to guide. First, Satyaki was made to guide and Krishna Baladam had to sleep. And then one terrible monster came and demanded from Satyaki that, look, 
I'm a rakshasha, I'm a, I'm a human eater. I will save you. They allow me to eat your other two friends. Sataki was very, very upset, angry, and challenged him to a fight. Imagine someone talking to a general. Sataki is a Maharata. So they fought, and Sataki was so angry. And the more he was angry, the more this monster grew in size. At some point in time, he couldn't even see his face anymore. And he got fatigued. He got, imagine, Satyaki, he got fatigued. Luckily for him, it was time for Balaram to take over. So he went to lie down. Balaram took over. The, the, that monster again came. He made the same proposition to Balaram. Balaram also was angry. And challenged him to a fight. So they fought. But then the more Baladan was angry, the more this Rakshasha was growing in height and size. Until you couldn't again see his face anymore. So huge and tall. He was fatigued. Again, it was Krishna's time to take over for guiding. Baladan went to sleep. The Rakshasha left. Krishna took over. Then the Rakshasha also came. Again came. He made the same proposition to Krishna. I'm a human eater. Allow me to eat your friends and I'll save you. Otherwise, all of you are gone. Krishna just burst into laughter. Into protracted laughter. And the Rakshasha became upset. Angry. This is a serious fair and you're laughing. You don't take your life seriously, right? Imagine someone comes to threaten you with a gun. Huh? I'm rubber comes to threaten you with a gun. <laughs> I remember back to Max Swami mentioned, mentioned to me one time he was in, in Jew Temple and he went for Jabba walk. And early in the morning, you know, he likes going out for a walk early in the morning. And someone just surrounded him by the beach. A rubber. So imagine... You are, sur you are surrounded by a robber and he gives you an order. Hey, give me all your money. And he just bursts into laughter. That was a similar thing that happened. When he made this demand, and Krishna just bursts into laughter. And so the Rakshasa became so angry. And then the more he was angry, the more he was reducing in size. And Krishna just went into protracted laughter. And then he kept reducing his size, reducing his size. And it became like so small, like a speedball. Like Krishna just picked him up and, you know, wrapped him up on, on his dirt. <laughs> so, the morning came, and everybody woke up. Satyaki and Balaram woke up. And, you know, Satyaki was complaining about his horrible experience in the night. Balaram also was complaining, oh, I had the same type of experience. Krishna was just smiling and not taking it very seriously. And they were a little bit worried that Krishna is, is supposed to be a friend in need, a friend indeed. A friend is explaining something that he had a bad experience, he should empathize with the person. But he was, Krishna was just smiling. And you know, they became a little bit worried more. And uh, you know, Krishna just broke down this, this uh, small sweet ball demon you know, and they showed it, unwrapped and then showed it. Is, is this guy you're talking about? So they say, how come? Yeah, it's the same guy. So Krishna himself explained that that is anger personified who came to tempt you. And because you became angry, so, I mean, you failed the test. So then, it became, it became larger and larger and larger. The bottom line here is, is sometimes we take simple things for granted. But laughter therapy is an antidote to anger management. It's a, it facilitates anger management to a very great degree. If you read the physiology of laughter, you find the nerves that are involved in la when you're laughing compared to the nerves that are involved when 
you were angry, there's a, there's a, a big difference in terms of the numbers. And you don't lose anything by being proactively trying to help someone when they come calculatedly, when they come to hurt you and to, to steer you up in anger. So the drill down consciousness is a basically <clears throat> involving the mindset of being envious of people who have perhaps more facilities than us. This is the real damn consciousness. Someone who has a better position than us will become, will become envious. We even plan to kill the person, to poison the person. Remember the case of Chitraketu's wives? Yeah. That's Duryodhan consciousness. The typical example of Duryodhan consciousness. Envy. She had a baby. We've been older, we've been older folks here. We've been older wives. Of course, the good, the good news this time is, you know, you're not allowed to marry to more than, more than one wife now in India. Isn't it? So, I think that will be avoided. The Duryodhan consciousness when it comes to, you know, appropriation and lost will be avoided to some degree. But still, we do have the Duryodhan consciousness. It's in, a ver in varying degrees. And one of those ways that we can really deal with it is first of all, awareness. When we come together like this, we should speak the truth as it is. When we talk to people who are not devotees, we may speak the truth in a palatable way. So that we don't get, we don't get, we don't get them discontented and disoriented and think that these people are, you're a real pessimist. We should talk about negative things all the time. I remember one time we were on, on, on Harinam and we had a pamphlet, uh, The Science of Death. <laughs> so I was giving this pamphlet to one lady and she said, what? Give me the sense of life. <laughs> you know what? Give me the sense of enjoyment. Why threatening me with death? People don't want to hear this. So, anger and envy, they are deadly diseases and they are ingrained in our bone marrow. Not just in the blood. If it's in the blood, maybe you can undergo some, you know, some blood purification, change your whole blood, and then you'll be, you'll be, you'll be all right. If it's in the heart, maybe if you undergo some heart surgery and then, you know, heart transplant, and you know, you'll be all right. If it's in the liver, maybe you can do some liver transplant, and you know, you'll be all right. But it's in the bone, in the marrow of the bones. What are you going to do about that? Except we undergo some spiritual transformation. <laughs> so this Drodan consciousness has destroyed the world. You talk about the wars. In the Bible time it's mentioned that when the kings, when they become envious of another king, they set out for war to conquer. The same thing that is going on on the planet now. All of the wars inter-tribal wars, international wars, world war, whatever, is based on what? Anger and envy. Envy especially. Envy is, is, is a bloody disease. It's a bloody vice. And we cannot say, well, you know, I'm free from this because, you know, who amongst us is really an appreciative thinker that we see the values of others, we see the advancement of others, and then we say, wonderful Krishna, please you bless this devotee more and more. All right, I would think, why him? I've been here since 30 years. Look, this guy just came, and Krishna is blessing him like this. What about me? I've been here since 40 years ago. You, they made him a sanyasi. What about me? I 
I've been here, you know, 40 years ago. They made him Tamil president. What about me? We may not say it out, but envy is ingrained in our bone marrows. And we cannot do a, a medical surgery for it. Medical surgery will not work. The only surgery that will work is Krishna consciousness. When we come to the Bhagavatam class, what, is the, what, does, that, what does that imply? Nastra Prayesu Abhadresu. All of these vices gradually become cleansed by hearing, listening to the Bhagavatam. So don't think, oh, another ritual again to go to Bhagavatam class. Oh my God. This is the process. This is the ancient medicine for the old and modern disease of envy. Hearing about Krishna, chanting Krishna's name, performing devotional service, this will help to do the cleansing process. And the Bhagavatam specifically mentioned, just by coming to the Bhagavatam, hearing, discussing the Bhagavatam, Krishna Vyasadeva does not bluff. He said, Nasta Prayesu Abadresu. All of these bad or wanted anatas will become cleansed. Any comments or questions? They say, ah, a word is enough for the wise. Any comments or questions? All right, so thank you very much. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. What is this question? Like uh, in Mahabharata war, there were only uh, seven Akshani Senas in the side of Pandavas, Yudhishthira Maharaj, and there were 11 Akshani Senas in the sides of Duryodhana. So apparently, it seems like many kings didn't want Yudhishthira Maharaj to rule. Apparently. Of course, Duryodhana politically motivated <laughs> and he threatened many of them and he kind of uh, did many other things, but they were ready to kill you, Yudhishthira Maharaj because they were standing in front of him. So, how do you understand that? Many people were, didn't want him to rule the kingdom. So. See, the thing is, it's not democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership is not, a bad, it's not democracy. Democracy means we are all bad and we put some bad guy in there. Now, you tell me, in this your temple, if the election or choosing the temple president is entrusted in all of you, the congregation. These guys who are your temple president will not be the president. Is it true or false? It is true. <laughs> but the Acharya knows why he put a particular person there. So Krishna plays the game very nicely. He knows better than we do. He knows better than those kings. See, the kings operate with Duryodhan consciousness. Envy, anger. <laughs> and those things don't create sustainability in development. Anger and envy with which the kings operate don't create a viable, sustainable future. That is what is also pervasive in our modern so-called 21st century. You see, all of the wars, that, even the civil wars that go on in a number of these developing countries, that's a remote control. <laughs> that's a remote control, man. So it's not about, you know, the number is equality. We vote, we, we go into the elections to vote. What is our motivation? What is the motivation? Someone, I remember one, one guy, he was rich, so he was going to local villages to sponsor kids in school. But he had, he had a big plan ahead of time, strategic plan ahead of time. He was planning to vie for governorship. <laughs> so he did all those things. And then, when it was time, so he went in. And then he came to all those villages, reminding them what he did. 
He said, you know me? I deal like this with your children. I am the one. And if you vote me as your governor, I will even do more. All of the villagers, they voted for him. Then, but that was a strategic plan. This is called politics. Administration is also politics. Administration means someone knows, someone has high social intelligence, manipulation. When you have high social intelligence, it doesn't mean that you have high emotional intelligence. It doesn't mean that you have high spiritual intelligence. You just have social intelligence. That's it. So, there are criteria that I use in determining who should become the leader. And these days there are so many, there are, you know, over a thousand leadership theories. And so, how many people are on the road and side does not really uh, ascertain whether the road and should be the leader. Because we see his consciousness. A person who is imbibed who is uh, imbibing a culture of envy and anger, how can we depend on that person? He will drive us go crazy. He will drive us into uh, wars of blame. There are authentic wars and there are wars of blame. If you study you know, international conflict, you understand what I'm talking about. So, yeah, how many people vote me to become the president of India? Means what? They are just a bunch of stupid people like me. Because I don't have, you know, political skill to, to, to lead this country. They say, oh, Vasudev Swami, we want him to be the president of India. What is this? And there are so many of them. So because I made them friends and I've given them some money and, you know. So this is politics. Many people could be by the side of the road, and, but you know, they are, what is their mentality? To exploit and use for themselves. So Christian knew, and that is why he wanted to enthrone Yudhishthira. Uh, and look at the whole scenario, the circumstances surrounding all of this usurpation and all this stuff. I mean, it's like modern times, we have someone is in another country and then he, he goes to the other country to kill the president of that country. That is even violation of international sovereignty. So, but when you have the power, you have the say. Those kings, they are, you know, they are friends. <laughs> when you have friends, they can back you up. These days, if you have friends, they can back you up. If even you do bad things, they say, yes, yes, yes. You did it. Powerful. Yes. I remember when I was uh, a kid, and we, have, we had three boys moving together. And they expected that, you know, we are friends. And we know each and every parent's home. And we go to eat here, we eat there. We go to school, come back at the same time because of fear of, you know, someone attacking the other person. So sometimes one of them will do something. And right on the spot, I would just tell them, no, this is wrong. He said, what? Come on. You have a friend. You're not supposed to oppose. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking this from experience. Yeah, so friend means uh, what? P partners in crime. Those kings, they're partners in crimes. Partners in crime, that's all. Any other comments? Otherwise, we'll close here. And give him the microphone. Thank you, Maharaj, for a very inspiration, uh, inspirational class. As you were talking about uh, when uh, anger, we face anger, so it can be subdued by humility. But most of the time, uh, when somebody is humble, the angry person, means most of the, this is experience, he becomes more uh, dominated on the person. So most of the time people don't feel encouraged to be, be humble. humble. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. please uh, kindly. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, this is it. If you are living in this world and 
especially if you are not living in the temple. Say you're a professional. Let me take it, take it in this way first. Say you're a professional, you're, you're not a brahmachari, and live in the temple. You're a professional. And you'll be hearing of humility, humility, humility. And so in your office, someone is doing, I remember some, some, someone sent me a message on Facebook saying, oh, this is what is happening in my office. He is the CEO of the, of, uh, of the company. And he said, people are doing wrong things. And, you know, as a devotee, you know, I'm thinking I shouldn't do them like this. I shouldn't do them like that. I said, come on, this is completely nonsense. You, have, you are a CEO of a company. Your company has a vision. You have goals and you have a mission statement. All your staff should align with the mission statement of the company, the vision and the goals. And anyone who runs contrary should be called as a friend to be spoken to. First offender. Second offender, again, that should be repeated. Third offense, fire him. <laughs> That is how to operate in the material world. Okay. See, you are in Mumbai. This is an industrial metropolitan city. Why you have securities there? You could just be humble. Be practical. Be practical. A proper mentions about you know this animal. What is it? This uh, snake. What is it? Is it a cobra or something that raises its hooves? People throw deaths on him, spit on him. And then he goes complaining that, you see, because I'm trying to be humble and this is what I'm seeing. But when the cobra got some inspiration and some good advice and he didn't really want to buy it. So these people, again, they come, you know, spitting and throwing deaths on him. And so he just raised his, raised his hoof, his hood, and then they, they run away. He didn't really buy it. It's just, you know, self-protection. At the same time, you know, a number of the acharyas, they mentioned that if someone slaps you here, you turn your side for him to slap. Baptist Dinder said you have to tolerate 99 times. If you can do that, wonderful. <laughs> How wonderful? Because the offender gets full-fledged reactions. But in, pra in practice, if we have to be really practical and help people so that they don't go to hell, if someone, for instance, commits an act which is against the Constitution of India, if, if you give it to me, if it is, I am the one managing the project, it's, I'll say I'm managing a project in India, I'm trying to be a devotee for the over, over, for over, power, over past 30 years. So I'm managing a project in India, and someone comes to, comes to commit uh, an act which is against the constitution of India. You know what I'll do? Huh? As, as a sign of humility, I will not take the laws into my hand. I will call the police. In other words, criminal affairs should be treated criminally. We don't take the position of the police. I don't know the police system here, but in America, if someone, for instance, if you're driving on the highway, and someone is driving slow on the same fast lane, you can call the police. And five minutes, the police is there to arrest the person. So, if you want to save yourself and save the world, you don't take the laws into your hand. If someone hurts you, yes, we can tolerate. But if someone is trying to cause some di uh, disorientation in the community, no, we should take appropriate action to be able to rectify that so that the disease does not spread over. If someone hurts us, we should tolerate. If someone hurts another devotee, we should not tolerate. In other words, devotees should be about protecting each other. The tolerance, Lord Krishna mentioned, Tam the But basically, if we see someone being hurt, being tortured, and then we think, oh, the Krishna said, I have to tolerate. The other person could tolerate, but you who is seeing that going on, if you don't act, you become an accomplice. 
Therefore, we take action when some devotee is being treated in a very bad way. Ourselves, we should tolerate. Humility. See, this is the beauty of humility. And sometimes we think that, like the issue you raised, if I'm too humble, then you know people try to ride me and all this stuff. <laughs> Which is true. It happens in our movement. Even in a brahmachari ashram, this happens. If someone is trying to be humble, and then you know someone takes on due advantage and tries to you know repeatedly do the same thing. Report the matter. You're humble means that you don't want to take the laws into your hand. But save that person so that he doesn't get to suffer in, too much in the future. Yeah. If you just keep quiet, he will suffer so much in the future. If you want to help him, get, get a matter reported so that they can, appropriate authorities can check him. Otherwise, he will suffer so much. Why do a number of our devotees even leave the movement? Offenses, apparatus. And one of those is the mad elephant offense. Committing Vaishnava apparat or Vaishnavi apparat. Do we want to help people? Then we should rectify the situation. We should check before the people get overboard. Okay? Shalapal Pad Kij. Sman Bhagavatam Kij.